What can this Texans regime and D'Amico Ryans learn about the Trey Lance situation in San Francisco? And does it have anything to do with C.J. Stroud? And speaking of Stroud and Ryans, D'Amico speaks with the media. He lets you know whether or not Stroud and the other Texans starters will be playing on Sunday. Should we have known earlier? Whose fault is that? Let's go inside the locker room and discuss it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Hey, locker room. Yeah, we in the locker room. Texas talk. Yeah. Can the you Texans know learn some lessons do. from the Trey Lance situation he in San Francisco? Really and D'Amico Ryan speaks with the media. The uh, let's us know whether or not CJ Stroud and the other starters will be playing on Sunday. We'll hear from him. Welcome to the locker room. It is the number one source for Texans daily digital content. I'm Landry Locker. You can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 Central on Sports Radio 610 and the Odyssey app. Appreciate you for coming through. This is the best place to get the pulse of what's going on with the Houston Texans. Like, subscribe, ride along. We've been rolling for about 11 months. Not too many people have given a damn uh, about what's been going on with the Texans. Quite frankly, still might not. Uh, but maybe you will. There's a better chance now than there was before. So if you want the pulse of that, whether you're a Texans fan or not, uh, like, subscribe, ride along. You won't get a better place that's more... Uh, in touch with what's going on in Houston. We talked to players. We talked to coaches. We're at every game, uh, and we got you covered here in the locker room. Two lessons from the Trey Lance situation in San Francisco that I think the Texans and D'Amico Ryans and Nick Casario can at least make note of. It's not these aren't like revolutionary lessons, but there are, there are a couple of lessons, and I think it's it's valuable for fans. Uh, to have this perspective. Once upon a time, back in my day, uh, there was a time when drafting a quarterback at the top of the draft, if it didn't work out, it set your franchise back. People got fired. Uh, organizations crumbled. Quarterbacks were paid so much that when you when you take a Jamarcus Russell, when you take a Sam Bradford, when, you, when, when it doesn't work out at the top of the draft, you're screwed. With the new rookie scale, that's not necessarily the case. And there's a lot of examples um, of that. Uh, just look at the uh, situation in San Francisco right now. The San Francisco 49ers, uh, they're considered a contender uh, in the NFC. And despite the fact that they traded a lot to go get Trey Lance in the 2021 draft, despite the fact uh, Trey Lance in just his third year appears to be on his way out or at the very least the third string quarterback, uh, despite that, San Francisco is still in good shape. So what's the lesson the Texans can take here? The Texans who just, just took C.J. Stroud, number two overall, the lesson is really simple. Good coaching can overcome a bad QB selection at the top of the draft. It just can. Uh, that's what Kyle Shanahan has been, been able to do. Uh, he's He was able to win games with Garoppolo. He was able to win games with Brock Purdy. Good coaching can overcome a bad QB selection at the top of the draft. That's what happened uh, with the San Francisco 49ers. And if D'Amico Ryan's Bobby Slowick coach well, and let's say CJ Stroud is Trey Lance, I don't think, I don't know what CJ Stroud's going to be. I'm not going to sit here and say he's a franchise quarterback or anything. I think he's going to be better than Trey Lance. Um, then you can overcome it, but you got to coach well. Furthermore, and this is still connected to D'Amico Ryan's. Good GMing can overcome it as well, because in that very same draft, Zach Wilson was selected before Lance. Uh, he was selected number two overall. Zach Wilson is already the backup with the Jets. Uh, the Jets have had some really good drafts with GM Joe Douglas. And Robert Sala and D'Amico Ryans worked together. Kyle Shanahan oversaw both of them. So this is kind of connecting the pipeline. And when it comes to lessons of drafting a quarterback uh, at the top of the draft with Lance and with Zach Wilson, the Jets were able to overcome it. I don't know if Robert Sala is a good coach or not yet. We're gonna that's gonna be to be determined. I love Robert Sala. I'm a Sala guy. I think D'Amico Ryan's has a lot of similarities. Uh, but because Joe Douglas uh, had some of the drafts he had, and and last year he drafted the defensive and offensive rookie of the year in the first round in Sauce Gardner uh, and Garrett Wilson. He also drafted Brees Hall uh, in that same draft, who maybe would have been the offensive rookie of the year instead of Wilson. Had he not gotten hurt, but if you if you draft well, you can overcome a poor quarterback selection at the top of the draft. If you coach well, 
you can overcome a poor quarterback selection at the top of the draft. Those are very valuable lessons uh, for Texans fans. If C.J. Stroud doesn't pan out, it's not ideal. But if these other drafts and these other moves that Nick Casario and D'Amico Ryans are making, or if D'Amico Ryans is coaching up players, you can overcome that. You can get to a situation where if you're the New York Jets, uh, you can then be in position to where you think, whether you are or not, you think you're a quarterback away, and you can go all in on Aaron Rodgers. Uh, you can get yourself in a situation like San Francisco where you don't really miss a beat. And if Trey Lance is gone, all they're going to do is talk about these draft picks, but you're still going to have one of the most loaded rosters uh, in the NFL. The other lesson, I think there are two lessons here. Uh, and again, good coaching can overcome bad QB selection at the top of the draft, and good GMing can overcome um, a bad selection at the top of the draft when it comes to the quarterback position. It is the locker room, by the way. Like, subscribe, ride along. I'm Landry Locker, at Landry Locker on all social media platforms. Appreciate you uh, for coming along. So lesson one, good coaching can overcome bad selection, uh, bad QB selection at the top of the draft, as, as can good general managing. Uh, lesson two, don't shy away from drafting quarterbacks just because you drafted one early. I know we're talking about Mr. Irrelevant. It's not like San Francisco did a uh, did, did, did a um, Mike Shanahan and the Washington R words, former R words uh, football team, and drafted RG three and then drafted Kirk Cousins. Which, by the way, if we want to connect this too, we can go Shanahan. But don't shy away from drafting QBs just because you drafted one early. And you can actually connect this to the to the Shanahan thing. Kyle Shanahan's dad and the Washington football team. They drafted Kirk Cousins, despite the fact they drafted RG3 number two overall, and they invested a hell of a lot in that. Now, fortunately for them, Kirk Cousins ended up being a pretty decent quarterback. The RG3 situation didn't go according to plan, but they had a pretty good quarterback. Say what you want about Kirk Cousins. They, they found a pretty good quarterback there on day two uh, on day two of the draft. I guess it was day one back then, old format, uh, whatever, whatever the hell it was. But they found Kirk Cousins after they drafted RG3. San Francisco found Brock Purdy after they drafted Trey Lance. So don't shy away from drafting QBs just because you drafted one early. Those are the two lessons uh, for the Texans when it comes to how they can uh, how they can learn from this Trey Lance situation. And who knows what C.J. Stroud is going to be. But the reality is sometimes it's worth swinging for the fences and quarterbacks drafted in the top five, if you're just a hater and you decide – Man, you know what? I'm not going to like any of these guys. I'm going to always say that these quarterbacks suck. Like, let's say leading up to every draft, your buddy Johnny just decides, I'm going to say this guy sucks, 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 this guy sucks. More times than not, Johnny's going to be right. Because playing quarterback is hard, and sometimes you have to swing uh, to find a quarterback. Now, whether or not the Texans should have, that that's a conversation that we had for months leading up to the draft, but I'll just give you a visual. Let's just go back to, we'll go to 2009 and let's look at quarterback selected in the top five. And you tell me how many of these guys validated being selected uh, when they did. Uh, we'll start with uh, 2009. Um, in 2009, you had Matt Stafford and Mark Sanchez. That's, that's one of two. Uh, 2010, you had Sam Bradford. No. Uh, 2011, you had Cam Newton, Jake Locker went eight. That's not top five. Then you had Andrew Luck and RG three, Ryan Tannehill went eight. Um, no quarterback selected in the top five in 2013, 2014, you had Blake Bortles, meh, 2015, Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota, meh, uh, Goff and Wentz. Say what, say whatever you want about those guys. Uh, Trubisky only quarterback taken in the top five. Now Mahomes and Watson did go later. Uh, 2018, you had Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold. Uh, 2019, you had Kyler Murray. Daniel Jones went six. 2020, Burrow and Tua, very good. Uh, 2021, Lawrence, Wilson, Lance. Uh, and then in 2023, now you have Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. I, I, I simply say all that to say that drafting quarterbacks is hard. But unlike back in the day, it's not the end of the world uh, if you don't hit on the quarterback, um, it can be overcome. But again, going back to the two lessons that we previously mentioned, it's going to take good coaching. It's going to take good GMing. And if 
you do draft a quarterback high, don't be afraid to draft another one. Look at Mike Shanahan in Washington and look at Kyle Shanahan uh, in San Francisco. Let's hear from D'Amico Ryans. D'Amico Ryans spoke to the media. Uh, speaking of C.J. Stroud, he lets you know if C.J. Stroud is going to be playing on Sunday. Now, do you think C.J. Stroud should be playing in the third preseason game of the year? I don't need to see him. Now, they want to put him out there, fine. But I don't need to see C.J. Stroud in preseason game number three. I just don't. They do. And they're going to see him. And he is your starting quarterback. Make no, make no bones about it. He is your starting quarterback. I personally don't need to see him. But we're going to. And D'Amico Ryans met with the media and he let us know this. Now, something interesting here, because it wasn't until nine minutes and 45 seconds into D'Amico Ryans' availability that we found out that the starters would be playing. And it's not because he was keeping it a secret. It's because that's when he was finally asked. My question is this. How is that so far on the depth chart of the questions? Here are the questions that were asked to D'Amico Ryans. And I'm going media critic. I get it. I'm not trying. I'm, I got love for everyone uh, in that in, in, in that building. But how was this asked 945 in? Like, as a fan, what do you want to know? Who's playing on Sunday? Is that more important than the biggest change from earlier in the preseason to now? Uh, what does Dantzler need to do to make the team? How tough is it to make the team win sign late? Uh, Tank Doe, I want to know that. Um, what were you doing when you were coaching the linebackers? What were you saying? Uh, how could you uh, oversee D when, play, when calling plays? I like that. Uh, how do you evaluate players with a limited playbook? Uh, how do you assess injured guys? Um, conversations with players, are, are they tough? Uh, how mentally draining is it to cut guys? What do you think about Jerry Hughes? I'm, I'm saying all this to say, why is it nine minutes and 45 seconds when we finally start asking about stuff that's actually going to be the headline that the people in there are going to write about? I didn't I didn't see a Jerry Hughes. I didn't see any Jerry Hughes columns. I didn't see anything on how tough it is for D'Amico Ryans. And again, I got my media critic hat. I'm, I'm friends with a lot of those people. But what 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 are we doing here? Um. How much is there an opportunity to show something on Sunday? Uh, and then we finally get to what people actually wrote about, what people actually care about. And luckily, D'Amico Ryans, they didn't say that's it nine minutes in because we still wouldn't know if the starters were going to play. We finally found out when uh, it got brought up. Here is D'Amico Ryans, head coach of the Houston Texans, talking about that. Right with the with the starting and all those questions about start, nobody ever asked me who's starting at linebacker or starting at safety, right? who's going out there first, right? It's all about the quarterback, right? So I get it, but everybody is vying for a job here, right? We know we put a lot of emphasis on the quarterback in that position, but man, we need we have to see who's going to be starting right up front in that D line, who's going to be starting in O line back, like it's. Competitions all over our team for who wants to be, you know, the first guys going out there. And to me, that's how that's the only way I see it. Right? Nobody's handed anything. For me, starters, you go out and prove to your teammates and practice every day in the meeting rooms, like how you show up to work every day, how you how you're a leader, right? How you're protecting the team. It's it's more encompassing than just ball, right? We want guys who are dependable, guys we can count on when we line up, right? So all 22 guys, right? Who are those guys? We're still figuring that out. So there you go. We're finally getting something on starters. 9:30. Again, what were you saying to the linebackers when you were coaching them? This is this is a walkthrough practice. How hard is it to cut guys? Where was this? Like, and I'm. I, this is the information, and 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 fortunately for the people that actually have to write uh, and stuff, he said this because they give you something to write about that people actually care about. But what are we doing for the first nine minutes? This is where it kind of intensifies, and we hear about whether or not C.J. Stroud has earned the starting spot, and we finally get the answer as to how much we get in depth when you actually ask in depth. Shout out to DJB Anime in depth how much the starters will actually play. 
in in everybody's case, we'll see who earns what, and you'll see that our starters in Baltimore. Is that, is that something where you tell the players each that, or how do you communicate? Uh, it's a work in progress each day, guys. I'm not going around, you know, telling each individual guy, hey, you know, you're our starter or you're not our. That's not what I do. I just want to see guys just work. And for our locker room, when it comes to that and about starters, right, our guys, they don't need to be worried about that. I think the whole point of that is, you know, does C.J. Stroud know that he's the starting quarterback in Baltimore? I think that's what Brooks is getting at, the great Brooks Cabina uh, of the Houston Chronicle. Like, does C.J. Stroud know that, or is he just kind of sitting there crossing his fingers wondering, you know, am I the starter? I think that's, you know, and I think that's an interesting question. Like, when coaches keep stuff from the media, and I don't blame them for keeping stuff from the media a lot, um, but when they keep when they keep stuff from the media – are they keeping it from us and telling them, or is it something that they're just keeping and, they're, and, and the player finds out an hour before, two hours before, or does he already know? If they're worried about just being the best at their craft and doing the best job that they can be, being a great teammate, being accountable to their team, if they do that, then they separate themselves, right? And so that's what I want. I just want guys who put their head down, guys who work hard, guys do what we ask them to do, and guys who love playing football, right, and guys who enjoy winning because we want to build a winning culture here. So as many players as we can get who have a winning attitude, they want to show that every single day, those would be the guys we go go out with, you know, versus Baltimore. Who is starting We'll see. <laughs> Yes, we'll play everybody in this preseason game as well. That's 12 minutes in. How many 12 minutes in. Who will play on Sunday? 12 minutes in. Come on, guys. How many series will they get? Will it be a half? Will we limit to the third quarter? How would that? Yeah, we'll see as of right now, the plan is to get our. Uh, st get our first guys probably about you know two series and see how that goes and a lot of younger guys right to have a lot of work in the game. Now, now we're going to a summit and stuff. I mean, where's that? Where's that article at? For real, where's that article at? We're just asking stuff just to ask it now. But the starters will play on Sunday, should they? Put it in the comments. Subscribe, like, ride along. Appreciate everyone. For coming through, how to get my media critic uh, hat on? That, that's that's the hit right there. That's what you're writing about. I see y'all. I, I I see what y'all write. I see what y'all say. I see what the people care about. Is C.J. Stroud playing on Sunday? Are the starters playing on Sunday? We got the answer. There you go. Lessons from the Trey Lance situation. Good coaching can overcome a bad selection uh, at quarterback. Uh, good GMing can as well. Don't shy away from drafting quarterbacks just because you took one. Hi, appreciate you for coming through. Uh, you can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 Central on Sports Radio 610 and the Odyssey app, no matter what happens when it comes to the Houston Texans, whether we figure out if the starters are going to play or not, when it comes to this Texan stuff, we are all in this together. Thank you so much for coming through. Locker room, yeah, we in the locker room. Texas talk, yeah, you know what we about to do. Localize every angle's what we really do. We the source, we the post of the city too. Landlock, got the game in the headlock. Localize every time, can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, we top two and we not.